Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 74. 74, the one and only Dylan DeMello. Oh, yeah. A single tier. Dilly. Well, the other Dilly. The other Dilly yeah. Dilly. Is what it is. That anyway. Uh, been a Dilly Dilly line. That's right. Uh, yeah, with uh, Gambrell. No. Dilly Dilly Dilly. Oh, jeez. There's a lot of Dillys going on. Regardless, uh, this week we'll be talking about uh, the actually not so bad week uh, that the Sharks had, despite the... Uh, the Washington game there. We'll get into that. Terrible um, start and a terrible end. <laughs> <laughs> we'll also be talking a little bit about the Sharks goaltending because it's kind of a hot topic, obviously. Uh, we'll talk about if this is a playoff team, which is a big uh, subject. And if it's not, then what do we do? And then mm-hmm. a look at the week ahead. Very good. Ready to start the show? Ready. Well, sharpen your swords and grab your pitchforks because we're talking Sharks hockey again. <laughs> Enter the angry mob. <laughs> so uh, this week, um, actually, you know, we're just gonna. I'm gonna give the points values here. So with the Sharks walked out with a five out of a possible eight on the week. So if you told me that the Sharks were gonna play Pittsburgh, they were gonna play Columbus, they were gonna play Washington, and they were gonna play Detroit, that they'd walk away with five out of eight points, I'd be pretty happy. I think we talked about this last week. Yes, we did. And I said I would be disappointed if they didn't get six yeah. of eight. And I <laughs> said uh, I said they, they should get a win in Detroit. Yep. They should be, beat Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Columbus will be tough, maybe overtime, and they'll probably lose to Washington because it's a back-to-back. And then I said, knowing the Sharks, it's probably going to be the opposite. They're going to lose to Detroit, beat Pittsburgh, beat Columbus, and beat Washington. You were so close. They were so close. <laughs> Ridiculous. You were one minute away from being correct. Oh my God. We'll get to that game in just a minute. But we're <laughs> going to go ahead and start with the Detroit game, which actually, in my opinion, wasn't a horrible game, at least defensively. I thought Martin Jones, though he played in that game and picked up the loss, he only allowed one goal. The other was an empty mm-hmm. net goal. So realistically, uh, Jones played a really good game in Detroit. He just uh, didn't get any run support, really. So I thought it was an extremely boring game okay. on both sides of the ice. Both teams looked like they didn't want to play that day. Uh, it was just a boring game. There, it wasn't like a game where it's 30 shots for each team. Yeah. I mean, maybe it was, but you know, save after save after save, like amazing, like holy cow. Like, those games are exciting. Even sure. if it's one nothing, it's still exciting. You're on the edge of your seat. This game was a snooze fest, man. Yeah. Both teams are going through the motions. Uh, I think they scored on the power play, their first goal. And then the Sharks didn't really come alive until the third period. Um, Then they seemed to really look awake and and look good, but they just could not solve uh, Bernier, right? Bernier was in net, so um, just a boring, ugly, ugly game. (laughs) Glad it got over with. (laughs) They they historically do not play well in Detroit. Yeah. Throughout their entire existence, they have not played well in Detroit. It's weird. It's something something about Detroit. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it is what it is. You know, the, again, the thing for me is that the takeaway, at least from that game, was, yes, it was a loss, and it was against a team that we should have beaten, that we're a much better team than, or at least I feel that we are. Obviously, standings-wise, we're not that much better than them, but uh, in terms of personnel, I think, oh, yeah, definitely we should have won that game. However, um, you take a look at the positives from that game. The positives are they played a good, solid defensive game. Um, Martin Jones did play a very good game um, and I'm obviously not so hard to do against a team like Detroit. I know some of the guys are barking at the podcast or yelling at YouTube <laughs> right now saying, come on guys. But no, I mean really the, the takeaway there is, you know, again, that it was a it was a pretty good game. They just didn't put the puck in the back of the net whatsoever. So um, didn't happen in the next game, right? So right. moving right along. Moving along to the Pittsburgh game, yeah. uh, Aaron Dell gets a start and he played phenomenal. I feel like this is a game that... Um, the Sharks' goaltending stole. Um, not He wasn't perfect. He didn't mm-hmm. get a shutout, but uh, he shut the door and, and did a very good job. Um, the Sharks were able to hang in there and, and force overtime and, and score the winner in overtime. Yeah. I think it was Burns buried that shot on mm-hmm. the power play. Um, that was a great shot. He had a, he, a screen goalie, and he put it right in the corner. Uh, it was a nice blast. He hit it pretty well. Nice. and um, It was a good win. It was good for the Sharks to bounce back after a terrible start in Detroit. Um, just a, you know... A stinker. Very, yeah, a stinker. Yeah. I, I, offensively, it wasn't really a stinker. Like offensively, it was a stinker. Right. That's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. I, yeah. After I just got done saying it wasn't. It was right. Good, you know. Like. And it's it. <laughs> I feel so bad for Jones because he finally puts together a really good game yeah. and gets zero offensive support. Yeah. 
Um, so anyway, going back to Dell, and, and he played very well. And Dell uh, is a shorter goalie. He's not to say that he's very short, but he's not a six foot five or six foot seven monster in net, which is kind of the way goaltending is trending. Mm -hmm. um, so he kind of almost has to work a little bit harder, make himself a little bit bigger. I feel like that's why he's a little bit more aggressive coming out of the crease sure. more. Um, and it, it sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And lately, it's been working. So the Sharks are getting points in the standings with Dell and Net right now. Yeah. So Dell actually gets the start in the next game there against the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets. Mm -hmm. uh, they end up winning that game three to two. So again, uh, they get the run support in that game, right? So uh, while they scored three goals in Pittsburgh, it took overtime. This one regulation. So uh, again, when uh, we look back at what we thought on the week what was going to happen, you know, I kind of said Pittsburgh. I felt was going to be closer, right? Um, mm -hmm. It was going to be hard fought. They end up winning an OT. I said with uh, Columbus, it's probably going to be that grindy type of game, and I felt like that's exactly what this game was. They mm -hmm. barely squeaked it out, right? There was uh, lots of good play back and forth, but the, the score being so tight and so close. Again, Dell taking the nets uh, in both of those games, both of those games coming up as wins. I think the team did play a really good job uh, defensively around yeah. their goaltending. Uh, and the, the, the goals took care of itself. The offense took care of itself. And that's something that we've kind of been preaching on this show mm -hmm. is take care of your own zone first. You have enough offensive firepower to make it happen, but you need the puck to do that. <laughs> we so, should say more often than not because the Detroit <laughs> was a good example of true. where it doesn't work <laughs> out. They play well defensively, but it doesn't work that's out. That's right. Um, but it's better than the other way around where they play poor Absolutely. defensively yeah. and get scored on and it still get offensive support. Believe it or not, that was actually the first shutout of the Sharks' season. Uh, oh, the against Detroit. Detroit. Yeah. Like, they have not been shut out in the season. As bad as the season has been, they have not been shut out up until, mm -hmm. uh, well, I guess that was December still, not January yet. But um, So that took a while. That, that was, you know, close to 40 games in. Sure. So, Halfway, um, yeah. It, I guess that's the upside. <laughs> the upside <laughs> to that. But, uh, yeah, the Columbus game, I feel like, was a little bit more, I was a little bit more worried about that game because yeah. uh, the Sharks usually don't do well against hardworking, grindier teams. Right. Um, they tend to just, I don't know, fall back and make more mistakes because they're getting yeah. more pressure. And uh, this time they took it to Columbus, which is great. And Columbus had just lost their starting goalie. However, Merz Lickens, who's the now the starter for the time being while the mm -hmm. other guy's out, um, while Corpus is out, he is the more talented and up-and-coming goalie. So we could see him actually taking over for taking over the reins, and he's actually a better goalie than Corpozalo is. Mm. So um, it'll be interesting to see how he does in a situation where he's taking on more games because yes. we are going to see him again later this week uh, at home. So we're going to see Columbus again. That's right. Um, but anyway, moving on, let's move on to the game that was today. <laughs> That I'm sure people are still seething about, <laughs> yeah, which is now Tuesday. Right. You guys are going to see this on Tuesday, which the St. Louis game will be later today, um, yeah. assuming that it is actually on Tuesday. Regardless, uh, Washington, so that was today, Sunday, as of this recording. And, uh, you know, again, this was a game where the Sharks, for 59 minutes, now again, for me, <laughs> I joked <laughs> on the live, this was an improvement, right? The entire time we've been doing this show, we've been talking about the Sharks playing good for 40 minutes, and then they take a one period off, 20 minutes, uh, where the third period, they kind of collapse, right? So then we ha saw later on in the season a game, I can't remember who it was against, but it was 45 minutes worth of really good hockey, and 15 minutes where it kind of fell apart. This game was 59 minutes of really good hockey for the San Jose Sharks. Uh, they were up 4-2 to two with one minute left. Evander Kane pots a hat trick in the second period alone. Uh, Couture gets an empty netter to make it 4-2. There's one minute left. I'm sure the fans are crawling up like roaches yeah. to get to their cars. And uh, <laughs> Washington fans, I guess, they uh, kind of wish they would have stayed. Yeah. Because uh, there was more to the game than The place that. was going nuts yeah. once they scored. They scored the first one. It's kind of like, oh, okay. That's, that's interesting. Well, they scored the third one. Oh, yes, right. The... Right. the, the not tying one, but the one before that. So um, that was just, that's it's a heartbreaker, man. Mm -hmm. That is brutal. And it, I don't want to call him out completely, but Gaudreau had a chance to clear the puck um, and kind of hit it right into, I don't know if that was Carlson or it was a defender. A, a defense. Yeah, player. hit it right into the guy, kept in the zone, and that just kind of sparked that turnaround and put yeah. it back in the net. Um, and then, you know, the tying goal with, I don't know, it was 15 seconds left or so, just yeah. a sharp angle, not even a sharp angle, that was the one that was like right outside. Um, it was just yeah. He coverage. put it into the the slot a little bit to Jones's left and uh, just cleared right over his shoulder. Now Jones was uh, well. Let's go back to the uh, the goal that made it four to three. Um, again, the attempted clear by Barkley Goodrow 
puck does not get out of the zone. If you take a look, Patrick Marlowe is already in full stride to get himself out of the zone before the puck is actually left. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to blame anybody on this, but um, if that puck goes out <laughs> of the zone, we're not talking about a loss, okay? And we're talking actually about a pretty good game by Martin Jones, talking about a pretty good game by the San Jose Sharks <laughs> as a whole. A, a phenomenal game. Right? Yeah. A phenomenal game by Evander Kane, mm -hmm. picking up a hat trick, right? So if that clear it's happens... so brutal. It's so... Ugh. I don't think they have life to get the fourth goal, Yeah, let alone the fifth, okay? That's such a good momentum swing into the St. Yeah. Louis game on Tuesday, too. It's yeah. so... Brutal. That's the that's it the best been. word I can think of. Yeah. So that third goal, uh, it, it pops out into the middle there, and I can't remember who it was, but he kind of wheels around now. He's got his back to Martin Jones. Jones doesn't really know where this puck is going. Uh, whips it around, fires it, and it just it beats him. Um, that one's kind of tough because, again, he's by himself in the slot. There really wasn't a shark that was kind of covering him or pressuring him. So <laughs> that one I have a really hard time faulting. Now, I know, again, people are going to call me the Jones apologist. Look, I don't <laughs> care what the name is on the back of the jersey. Uh, and, again, for when I played uh, defense, and actually I'm going to be playing again soon again. It's going to oh, be fun. So, hey. yeah. uh, but uh, when, when I was playing as, as a defenseman, I, I would always put it upon myself that, you know, if they got a guy right in the middle and he takes a shot, I'm not blaming my goalie. That's my fault. I should have pushed him out, right? Or I should have tied up his stick. I should have done something. Um, so maybe that's what it is. It's not It's not that I, I love Martin Jones specifically or anything. It's just that he happens to be our goaltender. So regardless, um, that was the third goal. The fourth goal was one that just kind of squirted out uh, from, like, I think it was in the low corner. It goes up. Fires it right over uh, Jones' shoulder. Now Jones is sunk into his net because the puck's kind of uh, in the corner. He has to respect the guys that are on his right, you know, for uh, like a cross crease. Yeah. So that's why he's sunk so far in. And then that one timer just goes again up and over. And uh, that one, he was more set. Um, he was sunk into his net, yes, but he was definitely set. He was facing uh, where the shot came from. So that one, I could definitely see where people are saying, yeah, that one should have been a save. I can agree with you on that one 100%. Um, could have been a save. Should have maybe been a save. Uh, I think he could have got uh, he could have got a pat on that one. So, is what it is. Uh, we go into overtime. We had our chances. Burnsy actually, Kaner almost Burn, gets a yeah. fourth one. Yeah. Right. So, uh, hope he played out of his mind in the overtime. Um, you know, hats off to him. In fact, he ends up getting the uh, the assist, the secondary assist. Um, <laughs> yeah, because he, he passed it up. He ripped it yeah. up there. Yeah. So well Jumbo, deserved. I don't have a problem with this. I think maybe you did. Jumbo was pressuring in. There was nobody back there. Holby uh, kind of stick handling the puck himself. Jumbo tries to get a stick on it. I think it's an okay play personally, uh, but uh, Holby fires it up the boards, uh, bounces off and gets it up to whoever, and they go in there and they end up getting the goal. Now the thing that I saw and you saw too from yeah. that replay was you see Kevin LeBanc. I don't know if he was coming off the bench. I couldn't really see it because of the, the camera angle. But when you look at it, LeBanc's uh, path, he's going towards the offensive zone. And the Capitals are going towards, like, through the neutral zone to our offensive zone. So LeBanc kind of thinking offense going the wrong direction. He basically turned it into a three-on-one. Yeah. Being out of position with Thornton in deep, well, going uh, after Holpe. Yeah. And LeBanc out of position, it turned into a three-on-one. Yeah. The reason I didn't like Thornton going in deep is because mainly because maybe they're doing a line change. LeBanc wasn't quite in position yet. Um, Thornton's not going to skate and get that puck on Holpe. You might as well just sit back a little bit, take the space in the passing lane away, force him into a bad pass, or force the defender to come back and get the puck from him. Okay. I, rather than going in deep and, be, and pressuring. I, I just I didn't like the play. <laughs> And then you have Carlson and LeBanc on the ice together. That's just bad news. <laughs> just they can't happen. And then old man Joe. I mean, I'm sorry. I I'm yeah. I'm sorry. Not. I hate to say it, but putting Joe out on on overtime, he's he's not the fleetest of foot. I think that to me is is the bigger thing is that Jumbo being out there uh, in the overtime when there's so much open ice. Uh, I know he's a great passer and whatnot, but. With that much open space, you kind of would rather have somebody who's a little bit more fleet of foot. Um, but I, again, for me, I, I'll agree to disagree with Aaron here. I, I, I didn't mind him going and attacking Holpe. Um, what I did mind was that LeBanc was not going and being defensively responsible. Um, that yeah, to me, yeah. that to me is 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 the big thing. <laughs> um, when you look at the goal though, and the pass goes across, uh, Carlson can't really get there. Uh, Jones, I don't know if he, like you had said during the live, I don't know if he didn't know how close or how far 
that player was. I just lost but, track of him. Yeah. Yeah. But when he, <laughs> excuse me, when he uh, drops down and slides, and he's in the butterfly and he slides across, he kind of stays there. Now I don't know why he wouldn't just do like a normal like a T push and just get from one um, side of the crease to the other, but still standing up. Uh, that puck looked like it went right over his glove. Yeah. So uh, I don't know why you know don't just come across and just stand up. Uh, if he thought that he didn't have enough time, I don't know. So he ends up you know down in butterfly sliding across the crease. Puck goes up and over his glove, and then that's the end of the game. So uh, you know you go from being up four to two with a minute left in the third period so to brutal. losing the game five four in overtime. <sighs> it's brutal. Blink Man, of an eye. It's pathetic. That shouldn't happen. The and you know what? It hasn't really happened. No, it's never happened. Right? In <laughs> NHL history, okay, uh, no team has ever come back from being down multiple goals when one of the uh, when the other team's goal, one of the other team's goals was, was an empty netter. netter. Like that like it j- it's yeah. never happened. So, I think Kurz made the comment, we're now finding historical ways to lose, <laughs> which is just It's going back to what I've said before and other people have said, you know, yeah. good teams find ways to win, bad teams find ways to lose. Yeah. They sure found a way to lose that game. That's just unreal. It's, uh, yeah, no, unreal is the correct word. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely unreal. When you yeah. have a two-goal lead. It also, let's just say this. Left. <laughs> Sadly, it doesn't surprise me. Okay. This season, you know, That's just fair. doesn't surprise me anymore. Nothing can really surprise me. So <laughs> it was just amazing. How many points have they left on the table in games like this this season? At least a half a dozen. That's sure. six points in the standing. Sure, yeah. That's Now they're right in the thick of everything. Yeah. It's just small details. Everything comes down to these small details yeah. that they just don't, they're not doing, and, it, and they're paying the price for it. Again, though, if we're going to take away a positive, the one positive that I will say is in, in a week where we played four games, right, where we had three top contender teams we walked away with five out of eight points. Yes, the Detroit game should have been a win. It could have possibly been seven out of eight. I'd be happier if we were higher in the standings and that happened. Okay, that's fair. Because we have to make up ground. That's the problem. At least we're over 500 on the week when it sure. comes to points. Yeah. I'm happy with that. Okay, so we're good there? Fine. All right, we're good yeah. there. So let's move on talk a little bit about the big hot topic from uh, the live the goaltending. Yes. Okay. So I feel like you could say that every week. I yeah. can't. It's it is. It's every week thing. And this is because both of them have, you know, their numbers are not very good. And I think again for me a lot of that is stemmed from team defense. I think if you take a look at the difference between when Bugner was uh, taking over versus Pete DeBoer, I think the defense has tightened up a little bit more. Oh, um, definitely. Yeah. For sure. A so, lot more. And I think you've you've heard all the the commentators like Randy and, yeah. and Jamie. They've all kind of said the same thing. Hedekin, former, mm-hmm. uh, you know, d- defenseman himself. And they've kind of said the same thing where yes, it, it seems like the the defense has tightened up quite a bit. Um, and it's funny because, again, you, you, you play better defense and then all of a sudden your offense kind of dries up in, in one game or another, or whatever the case well, may be. Or you play f- plugging the hole and another yeah. hole pops up. Or you play 59 minutes worth of good, solid defensive <laughs> hockey and then all of a sudden that one minute, you know, screws you. So that's, that's what it comes down to. So, yep. um, look, regardless, so now we're going to go ahead and, and just kind of delve into a little bit of the goaltending. So Jones, sure. Dell. It does seem like like Dell's starting to get a little bit more of a look, right? Yeah, he's played. He started more yeah. since Bugner took over. Uh, Dell has six starts versus Jones's five. Um, in those six games, Dell went three, two, and one. So not terrible, mm-hmm. not great, not terrible. Uh, Nine twenty-one save percentage, though. That's that's. I think that's better than league average. I can't mm-hmm. remember what the league average is right now, but I believe it's below nine twenty. Um, and goals against average is two fifty-one, which isn't stellar, but it's better than okay. than Jones. <laughs> you look at Jones' stats, he's 1-3-1 and one with 887 save percentage. Even for his standards, that's a little low <laughs> yep. for save percentage. Uh, his goals against are 302. Now the telling stat, though, and this is interesting to me at least, um, uh, Dell has one more game started than mm-hmm. Jones. He's faced 190 shots. Dell has, or, uh, Jones has faced 133. One game difference. It's, yeah. That's like uh, almost 60, 60 shots, shots, 57 yeah. shots. That's that's a lot. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, Dell plays better. And there was a stat, and I can't remember what it was, but there was a stat where Dell is, I think he's undefeated when he gets 36 saves or more, or 34 saves or yeah, more in a yeah. game. Um, so he likes seeing the puck and, and feeling the puck in a way um, and, and tends to play better. So maybe that's better. Maybe, maybe they let more shots go. 
when Dell's in goal. I don't know if that's a conscious thing or not, mm-hmm. uh, if they're not blocking as many, but um, Dell is getting peppered a lot more and is playing better. I mean, that's probably why his save percentage is a little bit better because he's getting more sure. saves and, and more more shots and more attempts, mm-hmm. you know, or chances to make saves. So maybe Jones would be up a little bit more. I wouldn't say he's going to be in the 921 save percentage. Yeah. But well, and, you know, I've got, um, I've got a little... Other thought on on some of that stuff, right? Sure. Okay, so we just got done talking about the Detroit game, no run support, right? So he lets one goal in. Um, if the Sharks had scored a goal, maybe two goals, right? If they win that game, Jones goes from one three and one to two two and one. Yep. Right. If the Washington game, Barkley Goodrow clears that out. I'm not putting all on Goodrow, but I'm just saying if he does clear it out. I don't think that the Capitals have enough time to come back and score two. No. Okay. So his then that means they probably don't score at least two goals because the overtime goal wouldn't have happened because there would be no overtime. And maybe the second Let's just goal. say one goal. Right. So say one goal one. goes in. So that's two more goals on the goals against average. There's two more goals against the save percentage, right? And his record would improve to 3-2-0. and oh. So this is, again, where, uh, to me, the goaltending was kind of similar in my mind, and I thought that they played fairly well. For again, Jones played really well for 59 minutes. They kept yep. in the two goals, and then all of a sudden we have a breakdown, right? And ends up in the back of the net. And where did that shot come from? High danger. What was the other shot that that uh, tied it up? High danger, right? So I don't know. For me, I just I I have a problem with just looking at the the, the stats and saying. Well, Jones's numbers were worse than Dell's, right? Because again, defensively, had we done one thing differently in those games, those numbers can change drastically. That's why I like looking at the game more so than just looking at the stats. But your point's well taken. Jones is the one that's played in the two losses of this week. Dell's the one that's played in the two wins in this week. They're going with the guy that's generating the win. I think that's that's what's going to happen going forward. Yeah. I, I see it as more of I, we talked about this. I think last week, maybe it's two weeks ago. More of a 1A, 1B situation. Um, and right now, Dell is the 1A. Mm-hmm. So I think he's going to get two starts to every Jones one start. Um, and they're also going to kind of play the hot hand. Like, yeah. who's winning games, who's getting his points, because that's all that matters. I don't think the coaching staff is not looking at their save percentage or their goals against average. They're looking at no. who's getting the win, right. who's getting the team points, who's going to get us in the standings, higher in the standings. So I think that's the reason why there's not going to be a clear starter. There's not going to be... You know, Dell could start losing a game or two in a row. Then they're going to say, "Okay, Jones is winning. Now we're going to go back to Jones." They're just mm-hmm. going to play the hot hand. Yeah. So I think it'll be a kind of more of a two to one split going forward. Yeah, I can I can see that, um, and, it, and it'll be really interesting to see because, like we had talked about earlier on the show and even last season, uh, you know, Dell in terms of handling multiple starts. Now he's going to get more starts. It seems will he be getting a big string of them in a row like Jones has had? Uh, will remain to be seen. That's what I don't think. Okay. I don't think that's that's why I think it's going to go because they know that. I think they know what they have in Dell. Okay. Um, to me, Dell's not quite a starter. He could be a one A one B kind of guy, but okay. I don't think he can put together a string of like Jones played what six games in a row. I think yeah. in November when yeah, they were yeah, winning. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Th- I can't see Dell doing that. I just okay. from what he's done in the past, he he'll put together a game or two and then just falter on that third one. So I think kind of keep him fresh, keep him. Um, on his, not on his toes, but yeah. but you're you're not doing back to backs. You, you're you're kind of giving the other guy a chance to and keeping him all fresh. Interesting little paraphrase on Dell, and then we'll move on. I remember him saying something after a uh, it was an interview or a post game or maybe an article of some sort where he had mentioned that under Pete DeBoer that he Pete liked to ride his his number one. He liked to ride Jones. He didn't feel like he got the shot that he would have liked to get uh, between the pipes, and it seems like Bob Bugner's giving him that shot. So. You know, here's the Aaron Dell. Hopefully, he can yeah. uh, he can shine a little bit because uh, right now we, we certainly need, certainly need to polish I mean, that he's, turd. He's a UFA. He can uh, he can make a career yeah. this year. He's 30 years old, and he go. could be maybe not with the Sharks. Maybe next year he's on a new team and could be another one B or yeah. maybe even a starter. Who knows? Well, here's to hoping. Uh, now we're going to move on now to our next segment here. Sure. So uh, this segment here is going to be brought to you by. 
Berticelli's La Villa Gourmet Italian Delicatessen. They are in downtown Willow Glen. They're a great little shop. Uh, they've got all kinds of sports memorabilia around while you're uh, waiting in line to get some uh, raviolis or a crisp combo mm -hmm. or meatball sandwich or any of the great Italian meats and cheeses and things that they have. Uh, it's a really great little shop. Great people. Yep. Fire away. They're also reopening on Tuesday. There you go. Today. So today you can go and get in line and get yourself a nice sandwich. May want to call ahead, but uh, either way, it's definitely worth the experience of checking them out. So, uh, La Villa, we feed the league. Yep. Okay, so now the question that uh, I think <laughs> people have been burning us on, because we said it long ago. We've been saying it up until this point. I feel like I doubled down on it, yeah, too, like a you month did. ago. You did. Maybe? Yeah. yeah. I, but I'm still a believer. So, uh, the, the question really is, is this still a playoff team? Now, a lot of people kind of asking us sarcastically if this is still <laughs> a playoff team. In their minds, they know that we're not. So I'm going to go ahead and just throw it to you. Uh, are we still a playoff team? Oh, man, it's hard to say after now, the You game already doubled today. down. I'm, I'm saying after the game today, it's like, <laughs> man, uh, do I think they can make playoffs? Yes, I still think it's possible. Okay. I think... Um, it's going to take a lot of hard work. I, I want to see more games like they did against Philadelphia where they're playing a full 60 minutes. I think even the game against Washington, you take away that last minute of the game, that's just a boneheaded play, not yeah. getting that puck into the neutral zone or even just icing it when you're up two goals. Mm -hmm. um, you clean that up, I, the Sharks are going to be making playoffs. They're going to be pushing. I think the Pacific Division is weak enough where there's no real pull away teams right now. Everyone's just kind of leapfrogging each other and it's just moving. And the Sharks are still within reaching distance. And it's, yeah. you know, it's not, you know, we're halfway right now. So I think, yes, I think the Sharks can still make the playoffs. Do I think they will is another story. Okay. I don't know now. Okay. The, it, the reason I don't know is because they're not consistent enough. The seed of doubt has been planted. I, it is. It is. <laughs> I well, will say this. Go ahead. I still think that they will be a playoff team. Will be. Okay? Not can be. Will be. The reason I say that is because I feel like the Sharks now are starting to trend in the right direction. Yes, they lost to Detroit. Yes, they blew a 4-2 lead with a minute left in the third period. They also blew that lead to the best team in the league. Okay? They beat Pittsburgh. They beat Columbus. Those are two really good teams to, to be beaten on. And again, you had four games in a week span. So that was, what was it, five days? No, six days. Six. Tuesday, right? Yeah. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. So four games in six days, and you were able to beat two top-tier teams, and you took the, the best team in the league to one minute of, of being <laughs> out, right? So can they contend? Yes, they can beat teams. They can beat any team out there. They can. Will they? Who knows? So I still think that they are a playoff team. I st still think that they have the firepower that they need, and I still think Doug Wilson has an ace up his sleeve with regards to making a trade, bringing somebody in. Um, I still think that they're, they're in the running, and I think you're right on the, in terms of the Pacific. It's not just about the Sharks and how, how many wins the Sharks and how many points the Sharks can gather. Mm -hmm. It's about the other teams around them. Now, if you went back and you remember uh, listening to Aaron do his Contenders Pretenders episode, right, that segment, um, one of the things he said was, who, who is it? Edmonton Oilers, you thought, were pretenders, right? Yeah. The Edmonton Oilers went from first in the Pacific. They're now down, I think, in a wild card spot. Yes. They might be in third, actually. Mm -hmm. See, the third or a wild card spot, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll, you guys can take a look yourselves. But they're falling. Um, I don't think that the McDavid Drysidle show is sustainable. I think that they're going to drop down, right? Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, the Sharks only need to beat th those teams. They don't need to climb and be the top in the Pacific. They don't need to be a powerhouse. Now, again, I do think they're trending in the right direction. If they can start putting the puck in the back of the net and they play 60 minutes instead of 59 minutes, <laughs> uh, I, I think we'll be in a pretty good spot. Now, you take a look at the pace and the trend and everything else, and you say, well, it just doesn't make sense, right? If we continue on this pace, if we continue the way that we're trending, it just doesn't make sense. Okay, let's take a look at the trend since bugner has been in there. I think we've did, done better and better and better, and I think if that continues, by the time we hit trade deadline, I think there's going to be a, a pretty compelling reason to be buyers as opposed to sellers. Right. 
That's my take on it. You may disagree. You're totally welcome to disagree with me. That's totally fine. Please put it in the comments down below. Tell me I'm a bonehead. That's cool. Uh, I don't mind. Um, I'm just having fun doing the show, guys. This is what it comes down to. So I call it blind optimism if you want, but really I am taking a look at the team. I'm watching as much as I can, and, and the things that I see, I see a lot of good things happening, and um, if they can continue to do those things uh, all the way through Till up until the trade deadline through the rest of the season, there's really no reason we right. can't be uh, right in the mix of things. I mean, the thing that they have going for them is they can still play better than they are. Absolutely. They're not playing their best hockey. Yes. If they're playing their best hockey and they're still struggling, then Done. no, they're not a playoff team. Right. But we know that we've seen them all play better, so we mm -hmm. know that there's more to give and they just need to do it. Right. Now, having said that, <laughs> our next segment here is called if not, <laughs> so if they're not a playoff team. If they're not a playoff team, yeah. and they are sellers at the trade deadline, right? who would you sell? What would you do? Kind of almost <laughs> armchair GM in a way. Right. So the, the to preface this, because, again, a lot of people are going to be talking about goaltending again, right? For right. This. Okay. So um, to preface this, let's take a look at the goaltending prospects. And I'm not going to go through all their stats and everything. I'm just going to go through the names. Okay. So we've got... Koshinash, which is how you actually say the name, right. not Koronash, not Koronar. Koshinash. He's currently the starter. He is. This, the, you're going to go in yes, the like, order. He's the basically. current starter for the Barracuda. Right. Okay. Um, then you've got Andrew Shortridge. He is the current backup. Well. Well. Okay. He got <laughs> five days ago. He, he was. Just got he was. <laughs> uh, yeah. He actually got uh, moved down, right. and they brought up uh, what's his name? Emond. Uh, Emond. No. Uh, oh, Sach Sach Sachenko. Sorry. Sachenko, so Zach, I think Zachary Sachenko. So they brought uh, Sachenko up, so he's getting a look now with the Barracuda as well. So if you're not going to Barracuda games, go ahead and take a look. You can see the future of the Sharks goaltending potentially uh, in in Sachenko and uh, Koshinas. Yep. Uh, Koshinas, sorry. Amon is uh, the the he's in juniors right now. So yes. he's not playing because he's a teenager still. Right. So those are the four goaltending prospects now. Someone had brought up a, an interesting point about Doug Wilson not ever drafting a goaltender who was a franchise goalie or who, that a was his starter, words, basically. but a starter. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if you wanted to, to touch on that at sure. all. Sure. I mean, but. Doug Wilson inherited Nabokov, who was came up through the organization, was drafted, but not mm -hmm. by Doug Wilson because he was there beforehand. And then he went and traded and got Niemi mm -hmm. as a starter. Uh, and then we had Toskala, and then we had uh, man. Well, Toskala was with. Nabby, we traded him. Yeah. Yet, but regardless, yeah. Um, Grice. The other one? Grice came up to the organization, yeah. but he never really became the starter. Right. Uh, he's kind of like Aaron Dell in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, Stalock is the other one. Right. Kind of the same situation. Had some spurts where he was good, but just not quite enough to put it together to be a starter. Mm -hmm. He's still not really a starter, Stalock. He plays in Minnesota uh, right. behind Dubnik, but um, Dubnik gets hurt. And so he gets some some stretches where he's a starter, and mm -hmm. he he plays decently enough. Grice is doing well in New York, but he's not. He's also like in a one A one B situation. Um, but New York has Barry Trotz as their coach, and Barry's system yeah. is just very defensive, very boring hockey in a okay. way. But uh, they don't score a lot of goals, but they don't give up much. Kind of like Arizona, right. like the Coyotes. Um, but anyway, the Sharks haven't really developed a goalie. They've never really drafted developed and, and brought a goalie up and here's this, you know, wonderful starter that's gonna be our starter for the next decade. Right, They've right. always it's always come through a trade. So is Amon that guy? I don't know. Way too early to tell. He's only nineteen years sure. old. Uh I don't think we'd see him in the AHL mm -hmm. until next year at the earliest. Um and the NHL level probably another four years, three or four years. So as as part of the if not a playoff team, right? So these are the goaltenders that we have currently in the system. So uh, again, if you were to unload one of those goaltenders, presumably Aaron Dell's not gonna be playing with the Sharks next season. He's on one year left on his, his contract. Mm -hmm. He's UFA. Either he gets traded this season or he gets let go at the end of the season, probably. Right. So these are the guys that are one of these guys is probably going to step in and become uh, the backup. And that was kind of the point on, on that was to just kind of preface it with that. Now, having said that, Aaron and I both uh, we were talking a little bit. Uh, we didn't really go into the reasons, but we said, OK, what if we just picked two guys from the team that we feel uh, would be prime targets for yeah. other teams for us to trade you know away essentially right mm -hmm. if we're not going to be in the playoffs you take your guys who have expiring contracts or whatever the case may be and you trade them away to get some picks prospects things back to restock yourself so 
Uh, why don't you go ahead and, and lead us off well, here? Aaron Dell, who we just talked about, is okay. one of the guys that I picked. Uh, if the Sharks are not going to be in playoffs, there's no reason to keep him. Uh, he's a UFA, mm -hmm. and there's going to be a team out there that's going to want a backup goalie who has experience and can start if they need to be. If right. Let's say there's an injury or um, maybe their goalie is just not. Maybe he's like a rookie <laughs> goalie, and he's not quite experienced and kind of falters in the playoffs you might maybe you want to yank him in a game and, yeah. and put in Dell um, so to me that's and he's cheap you know when you when you break down the salary um, closer to the trade deadline it gets less and less of a cap hit so uh, he'd be a good a good person to go yeah and I think he's raising his stock right now too so Definitely. if that was something when it came down to it and uh, we we weren't in the playoff hunt then I think you know the fact that he's starting uh, two games to every one for mm -hmm. for Martin Jones. I think that kind of bolsters his uh, his stock up quite a bit. For sure, so, um, he'd probably bring a pretty good return. Mm -hmm. And for a guy that you didn't pay anything for, I'd say he was undrafted. <laughs> yeah. So if you can get a draft pick out of him, mm -hmm. um, I think that'd be fantastic. Especially in this draft coming up, where we don't have a first round pick and right. everyone's complaining about it. Uh, get a couple couple picks sure. in that draft yeah. and come in our way. That would be fantastic, I think. Okay, and your second pick? Uh, Kevin LeBanc is Ooh. my pick. To me, he... I've been giving him time. I mean, not that me personally been giving him time. I just... <laughs> I feel like he's been making too many mistakes. Uh, he's a, Here's a six-round draft pick yeah. who is offensively talented but just can't really get together that 200-foot game. Um, too many mistakes. I feel like his attitude is just not quite there like okay. it's just not I, I don't see him changing is the other problem I, I would like to see him stay I would like that but uh, he's an RFA yeah. which is different so going into next year if we were to trade him the trade deadline for um, he'd be really cheap because he's only a million dollar salary this year so the cap it's almost negligible yeah. so if we can get back maybe a prospect or a good draft pick for a guy that you got in the sixth round and you turn that into like a second or third round draft pick coming sure. back that's that's a good Hall, I think, for for a guy that probably should not have made the NHL being a six round draft pick. Right. Um, so I think that he's on my list to to get out of here if uh, the Sharks are tanking. Yeah, that was an interesting one for me just because you know he was on the prove it contract and he hasn't really proven anything. So he had an opportunity to play on the top two lines. He's currently back playing with uh, Jumbo Joe and Marcus Sorensen for a guy who's trying to prove something. That's not where you want to be uh, nope. to to prove anything. So. Um, that could hurt his trade value. It could uh, make him, again, the $1 million thing, though, and the fact that he's an RFA. If you trade for this guy, he belongs to you for the next however many years until he becomes be unrestricted. He'd be a perfect depth guy mm -hmm. who could play third-line minutes and second power play specials, maybe even the top power play, depending yeah. on, on who you have already. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he could be even, maybe he's one of those guys that they have one def offensive defenseman, he plays on the point as the other guy. Sure. So he's kind of power play quarterback kind of thing. I don't know. Yeah. So, I mean, it depends on what team he's going to. I was thinking he would go to Colorado. I could see him being in Colorado. Yeah. And fitting in well Why not? there. <laughs> Third line. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Sounds good. So, for me, my, my two guys, and it hurts me to say this, but because uh, I love the guy, Brendan Dillon. Hmm. I think uh, he's kind of the shoe. And for me, he's the, he's the first guy that goes. Okay. Because Brendan Dillon, he's got a good contract, right? Um, he is uh, UFA for after this season, uh, but he doesn't have a huge cap hit. Um, he is strong. Uh, he is physical. He is a defensive defenseman. He's the type of guy that a playoff-bound team is going to want to add to their group. Um, he's the guy that's going to keep the guys, you know, out of the front of the net, and he plays that really uh, tough, you know, tough-nosed type of style of play. And I think that's the type of thing that tons of teams around the league that are going, you know, playoff-bound would love to have a guy like this mm -hmm. to add them into their roster. Right? If you've got I don't know, uh, a good top three and you need like a fourth guy or even a f five, six, and you can throw him in there, uh, man, that really makes your team pretty solid on defense. So I think Brendan Dillon uh, could bring a really good haul uh, just because of his style of play. It meshes so well with anybody who's, uh, you know, playoff bound. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you have anything else you wanted to add to that. Uh, don't you have one more? I do have one more. Oh. Did you, anything about Dylan oh, no, specifically? No. Yeah. You good? Okay. So I think my other one was Mel Melker Carlson. Yeah. So Melker, um, 
this is a guy that you know he he kills penalties. He's good on the fourth line. If you take a look at um, like say Andrew Desjardins, right? Chicago picked him up from the Sharks, and he uh, helped them win their cup essentially. And he was a guy that they just added to their fourth line, and he shored up their fourth line you know, yep. immensely. Um, great on the PK. Um, same thing with Melker, right? So Melker adds that element. And when you talk about a guy that is good on the PK coming from a team that's number one on the PK. Uh, I think that brings a whole lot of uh, depth and experience, mm-hmm. and it probably brings a pretty good haul coming back the other way. For a guy that plays on your fourth line, yeah, why not, right? Yeah. So I could definitely see Melker uh, as a guy that uh, gets unloaded if the uh, San Jose Sharks are not a playoff-bound team. Um, even at the $2 million cap it that he has, or it's $1.9, I'm not sure what it is. But uh, even at that amount, again, prorated, um, right. so it doesn't really hurt them at all, whoever that team's going to be. Uh, and it really does help shore up those fourth lines. For and sure. We've heard many times teams say you need all four lines, and you know having a fourth line that is capable mm-hmm. is a big deal. And Melker's certainly capable uh, out there at keeping the puck out of the net. Uh, we've seen him, you know, with stretches of offense when he first joined the, into the league. But I think most teams would be looking for a guy that can help uh, shore things up defensively. Yep. Defense wins championships. So uh, those are for me two guys, Dylan and uh, Melker, MK68. Uh, those are two guys that can uh, certainly help playoff-bound teams uh, be better defensively. In their own sure. Team. And so. uh, let's just have you guys tell us in the comments who you would trade if the Sharks are going to blow up the team and try and be a little you know, civil about it. Uh, two runners-up that we talked about, too, is... <laughs> in the live. Uh, <laughs> two guys that we, that we would, wouldn't would mind or anything is uh, asking Thornton and Marlow if they'd want to go anywhere. Okay. If the Sharks are like for sure out of the playoff spot, they're not going to make it, and there's still time to trade them... Would they be interested? Maybe some teams are reaching out and asking, and you know Doug Wilson would be like, "Hey, here's a team asking if you'd want to go play yeah. for them. Uh, no hard feelings or anything. Get a go shot get at a cup. cup. Go get yeah. a cup. So uh, maybe they get a package deal or they go together. You know, who knows? Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. Then I'd I'd root for them. Yeah, absolutely. You know, unless it's Vegas, then oh no, no way. But we wouldn't trade to Vegas anyway. No, I know. <laughs> no matter. But so anyway, were those the two you're talking about? That the two runner-up guys that okay. I was saying. So Aaron doesn't want to say it, but I'm gonna say it because it happened during the live. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna throw him under the bus. So, and we're not saying that we want this to happen, by the way. But this would be it, for me. This is more of an off-season move than a trade deadline. Yes, move. this would be more of an off-season move, and it would solve other problems that the Sharks have. If you were to move Brent Burns, okay. I'm not saying to do it. Again, the the fin factor is not saying we want to trade Brent Burns. We're just saying if you did choose to move Brent Burns, you would still have no problem on the offensive side of the blue line. You would center everything around Eric Carlson. Right now, there's kind of redundancy, right? You have two supremely offensively talented blue liners. You can't trade Eric Carlson because he's got the no trade clause and because you just signed him. You, you can't. You can't do that, right? It's, it's going to look really bad on the GM to do that. So right. um, if you were to unload a Brent Burns, imagine the haul that you can get back. You can certainly get a more defensively-minded defenseman to uh, take his spot, as well as a prospect who could play on the right wing, as well as a pick. This is the type of thing that a Brent, Brent Burns would bring. And Brent Burns has a no-movement clause, but he has a three-team yes. list that he submits by July... It was his one by July 1st. I think it's July 1st. Yeah. yeah, so he submits a list to Doug Wilson at July 1st of three teams that he would be willing to be traded to, which means he would have, he wouldn't be able to veto it, basically. Right. If he, if Doug Wilson was able to work out a trade with, with one, one of those, of those teams, yeah. then it happens. There's nothing. If it's another team that's not on that list, then he has full veto, be like, uh, no, I'm not doing that. Right. Now, again... I want to make this very clear. <laughs> we are not saying we want to trade Brent just Burns. Big disclaimer. Yeah, just big, on just big red letters we'll, everywhere. We'll get Super Producer Jason to just put like a big stamp and just like disclaimer. <laughs> okay, we're not we're not saying that we want Brent Burns gone. We're not saying he's a horrible player. We're not saying anything like that. We're just saying there is a redundancy and we have needs in other positions. This is where it would make sense to, to make that trade. That's, that's all we're saying. We love you, Brent Burns. We want you to stay. <laughs> And anybody who is thinking about unsubscribing, please don't. Regardless, <laughs> um, so we'll move on now. Uh, the the week ahead, week ahead. So we've got three games instead of four this time. Yep, it does start on a Tuesday once again. I feel like we're always playing Tuesdays, Thursdays, and that's Saturdays. That's normal. That's that's the Sharks' normal yeah, schedule, and that's what we have this week. As There's well, certain so. teams that don't like. Uh, Carolina likes to have Sunday matinees, okay. and I think Detroit's another team that likes to have earlier games. There you go. Certain, like Anaheim's another one that likes okay. playoff nights. They do like 
Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, because mm -hmm. there's not a lot of teams that most teams do Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Good. Anyway, Tuesday they finish up the road trip in St. Louis, so this will be the fifth game of the trip, right? They yes. For this, this. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so they finish up the road trip in St. Louis, which is not going to be easy. Um, I mean, we saw them play St. Louis at home mm -hmm. earlier already, about a month ago. So we're uh, kind of fresh in their heads. St. Louis is a tough team. They're the defending Stanley Cup champion. Yep. Uh, they got a very good goaltender. They've got a very good four lines rolling deep. So uh, that's going to be a tough game. It would be great to see the Sharks pull off a win. I'm not overly optimistic <coughs> that they're going to pull off the win, but um, I, I don't know. It, we'll see how... What, what's nice is the game was earlier today yeah. on Sunday, so they got a little bit more rest, a little bit more travel time okay. than if it was a night game and they only get one full day off. You know, I think they're going to go into St. Louis pretty angry. But they got into St. Louis today. They're not going on Monday. They're not traveling on Monday. No, I'm saying I think they're I gonna, agree. I think they're going to be angry. I agree. After that Washington loss, yes. I think they're going to come out upset. They're, it's disappointing when you play the game so yeah. well and you beat the number one team in the NHL. You're yeah. beating them and you're like, oh, this is great. We're going to get a regulation win here and then lose it in the last minute. So, yeah, they're going to hammer on the small details. You need to get this done. So, yeah, okay, maybe I changed my mind. I'm confident that they're going to win for St. Louis. <laughs> They're going to come out hard and, and play a full 60 minutes and, and beat St. Louis. How about that? Okay, sure. Why and not? Aaron Dell's going to start. Okay. There you go. You, you heard it here. He's it's, it's a win, guys. It's a lock. <laughs> just like that, you changed your mind, huh? Uh, totally. Just, Man, yeah. just, you know, just like the spring season, the highs and the lows. Just Anyway, uh, Thursday. Who are we going up against on Thursday? Playing, it's at home. Now we're back home yeah. and we're playing Columbus again. There you go. Columbus is going to want revenge, I think. <laughs> I mean, they're, it's fresh in their heads. It's only a week. Uh, it was this last Thursday, right? So mm -hmm. Thursday to Thursday. Um, so it's going to be fresh in their heads. Uh, they're a very good, hardworking team. Uh, John Tortorella, man. Yeah. He just he really gets everyone to buy into the system and, and work their tails off. So it's going to be a very grindy, yeah. hard-fought game. Um Maybe we see Jones in this game, depending okay. on how Tuesday goes. Yeah, uh, well, it's actually uh, Saturday to Thursday, so it's even shorter. It's like five days in between. Right. So, yeah, it will definitely be fresh in their mind. So I think you're right. I think Columbus is going to come out, um, you know, with that, that uh, very recent memory of getting mm -hmm. beat there, and they're going to try to uh, throw everything they got at us. Again, it's going to be a close one. It's a very grindy game against uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets. So hopefully the Sharks can repeat that performance. I would love to see that. And mm -hmm. if Jones is in net and they get the win, that's a good confidence booster for him. Um, I think he can use that right about now. If you saw the post game from the Washington game, he could not wait to get out of there. <laughs> um, very short with his, his comments. Very not shook. Somebody said shook. He looks shook. Uh, I said he just he's frustrated. He was very very frustrated. I, that's what I got from that. Uh, so hopefully uh, this is a uh, a game where he can bounce back. Um, I don't want to call it a bounce back game honestly because he played well. Uh, but hopefully this is a, t a game where you know the the team can play in front of him just a little bit better for that extra minute and uh, and we you know pick up another win there. That'd be great. Yep. So from there, uh, stay at home. This is a humongous massive. Uh, just a, a great game that's going to happen here. It's uh, at home against Dallas it's be very on emotional Saturday game. the 11th. Uh, I'm telling you guys the exact date because uh, you should be there. Uh, so this is <laughs> I, the this will be a sellout for sure. Yeah, this is the return of the former captain Joe Pavelski. Um, he is going to uh, be playing against his former team for the first time in SAP Center. Yep. So uh, it's going to be an emotional one. It's going to be they're going to have the tribute and everything else. Um, it'll be it'll be nice. Um, the the other go ahead if there's anything else you want to oh, say about did that. Did they already one, give him the gift? They or did. Yeah. They gave it to him already. Rolly. Yeah. 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 They gave him a Rolex for for the. <laughs> he didn't play a thousand games for the Sharks. He was just short, right? Nine hundred and fifty something, whatever it yeah. was. Yeah. So so Dallas is like, hey, thanks. Or it wasn't even Dallas. It was business nasty, it, right? Yeah. He says, uh, like, hey, thanks, Sharks, for uh, dumping them right before a thousand games. So you don't yeah. have to buy him a gift. Yeah. So Bissonnette <laughs> says, you know, the the Sharks should have to chip in because he played nine hundred something games. He plays forty something games with the Dallas Stars, yeah. and now they have to give him this gift. They gave him a four. It was a uh, four person golf trip in Scotland. I think it's something like that. Cool. Which is cool. Don't get me wrong. He's a good golfer, though. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, then the, the Sharks came out and they gave him a Rolex. So um, Hopefully with the Shark logo on it. I was going to say, <laughs> I bet it's teal. <laughs> Sharks for life. There you go. So, uh, anyway, this is going to be a big game. going to be an emotional one. So, uh, if you have not bought your tickets, you need to do that right away because it will be a sellout. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty confident. 
Regardless, uh, Dallas, uh, they've got some pretty big-name players, like this guy Joe Pavelski, uh, right. <laughs> who we just hey. talked about. And he's starting to play better. Yeah, they are. They're, yeah. they're heating up, so it's going to be a good one. Um, I don't know. What are you looking for out of that game? <sighs> Man, it's, it's going to be tough because, uh, I mean, Pavelski played with a lot of these guys, a lot of the roster from last year, so it's going to be an emotional game. Um, so it would be more emotional for the Sharks than it would be for yeah. the Dallas Stars, right? Yeah. Because there's only just Joe Pavelski on the team. Mm -hmm. So um, I feel like if they're going to do a tribute before the game starts, it's a little harder versus like an in-between, yeah. like a commercial break right. kind of thing. And I think he deserves more than the commercial break one. So I bet they do some kind of on-ice ceremony before the game starts with him out there yeah. uh, thanking him and all that stuff. So... It's just gonna. It changes the tone of the crowd and the game, and I hope the Sharks are able to snap out of it yeah. and beat them. <laughs> well, they they did that with uh, Patty Marlowe, right? When he did his yeah. return, it was right off the hop. You yep. know, just uh, before puck drop, they just had him. Um, you know, go ahead and put something on the the jumbotron there, mm -hmm. and he was skating around, waving to the crowd and whatnot. They got it over with uh, before the puck even dropped. Exactly. So I imagine they'll do the same thing with Pavelski. Now, the other big thing about uh, the January 11th game is that it is the Open Waters jersey giveaway. <laughs> not not quite the same caliber. That's what you're excited about. Caliber. Hey, I mean, <laughs> you get something out of it, right? It's cool to see Pavs again, but I can see him on TV, right? right. It's nice to get a shirt. We'll get another one up on their collection here. There you go. So uh, if you haven't seen that one, you're not paying attention to Twitter because they are blasting it everywhere. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just a, it's a gray shirtsy. It's kind of like um, you know the designs that they have uh, from the different artists and whatnot. This one being the Shark Freak. The other one again, Open Waters, and they, that one is available uh, if you go to that that game on the 11th. So t two really big things on the 11th. Mm. So uh, it's going to be a, a good day. So. That's it for the uh, week ahead, correct? Cool. Yeah. Very good. Okay. So, uh, guys, I just want to remind you to hit that subscribe button because uh, the live session that we did right before this, we had some really good conversations. We're usually on for like an hour or two, right? Yeah. We usually do an hour. We, we talk for quite a bit and uh, people popping in and out all the time. And, um, you know, it's, it's good because we get some good comments. We get some, you know, you guys are... Homer's comments and whatever else. Like I said, hey, you know, the other thing is, you know, we convert some fans too. We get some yeah, guys that are, yeah. you know, we had a uh, Colorado fan, fan, a St. Louis fan. We've yeah. had, you know, some fans, even a Vegas fan at one point in time mm -hmm. we had that was visiting with us and, and being very cordial and whatnot. And we appreciate all you guys that are in the chat room there and are in the chat room, but like the all the comments there that are being very nice and, uh, you know, just sharing, sharing the community with everybody. So yep. I think it's great. So there you go. Uh, so again, do hit that sub button so that you know we're going live because we'd love to hear from you uh, in real time. There yep. you go. So anything else there? Uh, just a quick fantasy update. Yeah. We'll do. Uh, we'll show up the screenshot right here there you of go. Uh, first. I guess not season first league. Mm -hmm. First league. Uh, I'm dropping in this league. I'm now in fourth place. Oh, how the mighty have terrible. fallen. I was in first for a while. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. Uh, I needed to tweak my team a little bit more. I haven't been paying too much attention to it, so I'm like, <laughs> ah, it makes sense that I'm falling. Uh, then here's the other league, League number two, and I'm still in first, there which is go. fantastic. So this league, I just like this team better. Mm -hmm. Like I, just, I feel like I drafted better. So I would too if I was in first. Well, yeah, I've been in first for most of there the you go. time. So, uh, yeah, so there's our fantasy league update. Quick 30 seconds. Yay, <laughs> and there again, I'm very sorry, but we've uh, stuck a fork in the EASHL updates. <laughs> if you've not heard, uh, it is done. We are not doing that anymore. We noticed that people aren't paying attention to it, so it's okay. We're just not going to do that. We are still there uh, playing for you guys while I'm there. Correct. He's not so much. Yeah, I am. Once in a while. Yeah. I'll probably be on tonight if you want. Regardless, uh, for Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we will see you guys uh, next week. Next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.